Hello all, welcome to Let's Tune. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, then do subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to never miss an update from us. Do check out our website www.letstude.com for wide range of courses on maths and science. Hi there friends. In this session, we will be introduced to a whole new world, a world of physics. In this beautiful planet that we call Earth, there are a lot of interesting events that take place. These events are around us, which we see or do or experience almost regularly. At some point in time, your curiosity would have definitely got the better of you and would have pushed you to ask questions like what's going on or how does that happen? Well, leaving miracles apart, the answer to all these questions is physics. You see, there is more to events in our everyday lives than what meets the eye. So, to appreciate the events that you see, you have to first understand events that you don't see. Confused? Don't worry. Let's make it simple by looking into 10 of our everyday life examples at random. We all know what that sound is, don't we? It is a very annoying yet important sound which tells us that we have to be up and about. We wake up in the morning at the sound of the alarm. Sound is something which we can't see but can hear or experience. It is used in important medical equipment like the ultrasound scanner and by ships to estimate the depth of the ocean. Physics studies the origin, propagation and properties of sound. Let's make a note of this event of sound and other events yet to come in the session before we define what physics is in the end. To have a cup of coffee, we boil water. After turning on the stove, we notice that the water is hot enough when it starts boiling and when we see steam. This gradual rise in temperature that causes the water to bubble and later change to steam is called heat. Thus, we get hot water by heating, that is, increasing the temperature of water. Heat is used in the industry to melt metal and make various types of heavy-duty machinery like automobiles and generators. It is also used in household appliances like the electric or steam iron. Heat and its properties is an important topic of physics as well. While we take a walk in the park on a tar road, we have a good grip without slipping because of a sort of roughness or resistance between the soles of our shoes and the surface of the road. This resistance that's responsible for grip is called friction or traction. But say if we're busy on our cell phones or waving at our friends and we do not notice a banana peel in front of us. What makes us fall? Well, apart from our absent-mindedness, it is due to the reduced friction between our shoes and the road because of the slippery banana peel. Friction, which is an important factor in the making of tyres, is also explained by physics. We have all observed apples falling from a tree or balloons floating away in air. How is this possible? The apples fall down while the balloons float up? This is nothing to be puzzled about. The answer is simple. Our earth has a kind of a pull that draws every object to its surface. This pull is called gravity or gravitational force which keeps every object grounded to the surface of the earth and prevents them from floating away. This is why apples fall to the ground and why people or objects on the underside of the earth do not fall into space. So why did the balloon float away and not fall to the ground? Hmm? Again, it's no big deal. We know the air is light. So imagine something which is lighter than air, like say helium gas, filled into the balloon. Because it is light, it rises to a level higher than air and thus works against gravity, which now cannot keep the balloon grounded. Gravity is studied to a great extent by astronauts to mimic conditions in outer space. 
In fact, gravity is the very event that was studied by Sir Isaac Newton, who is now considered one of the fathers of physics. When we use a compass, we notice that the direction of the needle is constant. That is, the needle points in only one direction, north. This is because of a force of attraction between two oppositely charged ends called magnetism. All materials that follow magnetism can be termed as magnets. Did you know that apart from being just a planet, our Earth is actually one big giant magnet? The geographic north pole of the Earth, that is the Arctic region, is actually the magnetic south pole which attracts the magnetic north pole of the compass. This is why the compass always points north, no matter where it is. We all know opposites attract, don't we? Physics looks into the property of magnetism, which is used in modes of transport, like the metro trains and in parts of electronic speakers. We would have all seen or done at least a few of these tricks. So what makes objects remain still or maintain its position even if there is a pull or tug on it? It is the inertia or unwillingness or laziness of a body to change its state of rest or motion. This means if a body moves, it prefers to remain in motion and finds it difficult to stop unless an outside force acts on it. Similarly, when a body is not moving or at rest, it prefers to stay that way and finds it difficult to start moving unless an outside force acts on it. This property of inertia is important for the automobile industry while mimicking accidents for safer cars to be manufactured. Thus, physics also involves inertia. Speaking of tugs or pushes, what do we do when we open or close a door? We use force. When the door is heavy, we use more strength to move it, which simply means that we use more force. Force is something that we use on a daily basis in almost all tasks we undertake, like brushing our teeth, pushing buttons on a keyboard or cell phone. Force is also involved in various processes, like coughing, sneezing, and blood flow due to the contraction of certain muscles in our body. Simply put, force is nothing but the pressure exerted by one body on another body. Sports like swimming or running also employ force. For this reason, force is also dealt with by physics. Let's look into our daily gadgets like the cell phone. What makes the cell phone work is the electricity that's supplied by the battery. What charges the battery is the electricity that's supplied by the power source. Electricity, as we all know, is an important part of our daily lives. Be it for transportation, like buses, cars or trains, or for powering our household appliances, like the television, the fridge, the microwave, or even to watch this video. Did you know that our body is also like an appliance and the power to run it comes from certain cells which produce electricity. This type of electricity is called as bioelectricity which we will see in our biology videos. Though we all are biological systems, the mechanism of electricity production is explained by physics. Remember, if electricity can rock your world, it can also shock your world. The many usages of electricity is enough proof to justify why we include electricity in physics. After a while of rain, we see a rainbow in the sky. It is beautiful and has seven different colors. This is a property of light, particularly white light. Though we call it white light, it is actually a mixture of lights of many different colors. Rainbows are formed due to the splitting of sun rays, which is white light, through raindrops. Study of light is an important part of physics because of the various usages of light, like in decorations and lasers.
Did you know that we are all made up of many, many smaller particles which we cannot see individually with our naked eyes or even with a microscope? They are even smaller than the smallest cell and in fact these are the very building blocks of cells and everything in the universe. Do you know what these particles are? They're called atoms. Two or more atoms come together to form a molecule and many molecules come together to form visible matter. Just imagine how many molecules and consequently how many more atoms we are made up of. Billions, trillions, zillions. Even things that we can't see like minute dust particles are made up of atoms. The theory of atoms and molecules is involved with the origin of the universe, life on earth and everything around us. Hence, physics just cannot do without it. From all of these events, let us now define physics. The word physics comes from the Greek word physis meaning nature and physique meaning knowledge of nature. Thus, simply put, physics is nothing but the study of nature and the universe on the whole and the various occurrences or events taking place in it. For each of the previously mentioned examples, there are other events that are occurring at the same time which are invisible or which we haven't considered. Physics explains all these unseen events too. Its goal is to answer all questions right from elemental particles like atoms to gigantic structures like planets. It gives us an understanding of how and why things are the way they are. The events mentioned earlier were just minute examples of how physics is involved in our everyday lives. So now do you see how important studying physics is? Physics is a lot like a mountain which is not difficult to scale and when you reach the top the view is beautiful. Just don't accept things the way they are. Follow your curiosity wide and far. So that's it for this session. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to never miss an update from us. Till then keep watching, keep learning.